Hi, and welcome to lesson seven on various types of quantum networks. Before we begin these types of networks, we have a small disclaimer. This lesson begins a block where um, we're going to be right at the leading edge of quantum network design. Many details will inevitably change as the work continues. But the main purpose is to present to you the various questions and the design principles, which are timeless. The specific examples that we use in these lessons are drawn from our own design work by the members of the Aqua Group, the QITF, and the Moonshot team, building the various testbed networks in Japan. So let's begin with step one. In step one, we're going to talk about organizations and requirements. The main question that we are trying to answer here is how do we begin even thinking about designing a quantum network? So, so far we have discussed networks and applications in the very abstract. With this lesson, we're going to get a little bit more concrete. A network is owned and operated by an organization and it's operated for a particular purpose. Given this purpose, it will determine the geographic distance between the nodes of the network, the number of nodes that are required, the expected traffic pattern, the performance of the network that we are expecting, various security concerns. Let's begin to talk about the various purposes of a network. One might be share of quantum mainframe within a building, across a campus, or even around the world. This is most likely going to be the case with early quantum networks, where big companies are going to own powerful quantum devices and other people will want to make use of these devices remotely. Another purpose might be interconnecting subsystems or nodes of a mainframe over a computer. These type of networks are much smaller than the one mentioned in the previous point. Another purpose could be transferring of data from sensors back to the mainframe. We are going to talk about applications to sensing and metrology, and this is one such application, one such purpose, where the sensors pick some weak signals and they send the data back to a mainframe for processing. But sometimes we don't want to only connect this mainframe to a sensor, we also want to connect the sensors themselves. This is another purpose, interconnecting sensors. Also, we might want to provide a security service such as quantum key distribution which we have talked about a lot previously. We, want, we would like to also sell quantum computing services as well as sell quantum networking services. Now that we have a clear idea of what various purposes of our network might be, we can start to think about the system and network and the requirements. Given our purposes, we can begin to think about how to define technical requirements for the computers and the networks. We might want to think how many qubits are we going to need, either in our computer or in our quantum nodes. What's the computational speed of our quantum device? What's the network speed? How many bell pairs do we require the network to be able to distribute? What's the fidelity of these bell pairs? But remember, the application determines what the fidelity of the end-to-end -end bell pair should be. Again, geographic distance between the nodes. And from this, we can start to think about how to actually design the network and finally how to build it. This concludes the first step.